Hello everyone, my name is Dutchy. welcome to RPG Labs, and let's get into this video. Alright, so today's video is going to be about Sea of Thieves, tips and tricks and how to get better. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there are pretty new to the game, because I have been running into you guys, and a lot of people are just like, Hey, I just got the game on Game Pass, and it's so fun, but everybody keeps sinking me. So I decided, let's make a video on how to get you guys better. Also, in the link in the description, there's a Discord server, a small one, that you guys can join and link up with some of our crews. So, if you're keen for that, go to the link in the description, join the server, and, well, let's have fun. Alright, well, let's get into the video properly now. Alright, so the first thing you always want to do is loot up. Now, looting up is the most important thing at the beginning of the game because you don't really start off with too many supplies and the food they have in your barrel are usually bananas which are useless. So, if you have the money, I would recommend going up to the Merchant Alliance, talking to this lady right here, buying the Cannibal Crate, the Wood Crate and also the Storage Crate if you got the money. Now, the storage crate is extremely handy in my opinion because you can loot up the islands within a few minutes instead of having to run back and forth with your pockets filled. Now, while you're looting up, don't forget about little crates like these ones on top because they still contain a bit of loot as well. Another thing to think about is make sure that you have enough space in your storage crate because once all these slots have been filled, you will not be able to put anything else in there. So let's say there's a couple of cursed cannibals in a barrel and you are trying to still take it with the crate. If your crate is full, well, you won't be able to take those cursed cannibals and you will be missing out unless you manually look at it and grab it out. So I would recommend always just checking the worms in your pocket, the fireworks in your pocket and cursed cannibals in your pocket. Now, another thing I would recommend is only having one storage crate aboard your ship. So, those other two storage crates that you just bought with the cannons and the wood should be filled into the normal storage crate. This is because you can easily grab some of them, like over here, where I'm on someone else's ship, and I'm just dropping them overboard so they can't use them. Now, after you've done that, I recommend storing everything in the barrels so people can't get to them that fast. Because if they're in a storage crate, they can easily grab them and either throw them overboard or use them against you on their own ship. And don't forget to put all the cursed cannibals in your own pocket. Because people can easily jump aboard your ship and grabbing all the cursed cannibals that are in your barrels. That means that they can use them against you and will sink your ship really easily with your own cursed cannibals. Alright, now let's move on to ship combat and movement. Now, if you're not too confident with the ship combat yet, I would recommend going up against some skelly galleys or skelly sloops. The flame heart ships are also alright, so the ghost ships basically, but I would definitely recommend going up against some of the galleys. The skelly galleys, that is, by the way. Now, the reason I would go up against some skelly galleys is because they offer a bit of challenge. Uh, the sloops don't really offer a bit of a challenge because you can just hit them a few times and they're basically gone. But the skelly galleys sometimes take quite a while to actually sink, especially if they are the ghost skellies. Now, the cool thing about this as well is that they offer you a little bit of supplies and a bit of loot as well. So, you know, it's always worth sinking them just for the loot, especially if you are new. Another thing is, they have cursed cannibals, which means that they can either anchor your ship, poison you on your ship, make you drunk on your ship, there's a lot of cursed cannibals out there. But I recommend jumping on their ship if you see some of the cannibals that you like, for example the anchor ball that these guys have, you can jump on their ship, see when they load it into their cannons and steal some of those cursed cannonballs for yourself. One more thing. They will only ever have one cursed cannibal, so let's say if they have an anchor ball, they'll only have anchor balls on their ship. So they won't have any grog balls or ballast balls or anything like that. They'll only have anchor balls. Another thing these skelly galleys will teach you is when to repair and when not to repair. For example, if you only have one hole in your ship, it's not worth going down, it's more worth actually staying on the cannon, firing at them, or actually putting a firebomb on their ship so they can't fire back. Now this goes the same for most player ships, actually firing back at them and distracting them to actually stop firing at your ship is worth more than actually fixing that one plank down below. Now if you only have one or two holes at the bottom of your ship, bucketing a few times is worth more than actually fixing your ship while you're in mid combat. Because just buying that time allows you to basically shoot at the enemy more. Also a little tip right here with this grate, 
just actually bucket and throw it out of the grate because it will be a lot faster than running all the way upstairs again. Now Skelly Gellies are always perfect for target practice as well. Now what I would recommend is trying to get a little bit of distance between you and the Skelly Gelly and then try to get some shots. Because everyone can hit shots from close up but it's kind of a little bit of a skill to hit shots from further away. Now I know I'm not too far far away from this guy but you know medium to long range is where you really need to start practicing your shots on this game. So don't be afraid to airball or anything like that. You need to learn how to shoot your shots better. All right, now let's start talking about something that I really love, chain shots. Now the thing with chain shots is, is that you can't really use them on skelly gellies or anything like that. So don't fire at skelly gellies. You're gonna have to actually find players in the world to hit your chain shots at. Now I would definitely recommend going around and just practicing on anyone. Because, well, you need to learn how to do your chain shots and the only way you're going to be able to do that is to go up against other players. Now, while you chain shot them, that means that they are sitting duck in the water and they can't really do too much. I would recommend circling their ship with your ship and just start firing all the cannons you got at them. Because the more holes on their ship, the more they have to stay on their ship to either repair it or they will sink. So that means that there's a less chance of them boarding. Just make sure you adjust the wheel every now and then, so you keep circling them properly. Oh, and if you got some cursed cannibals, why not use those as well? Now, while in mid-combat, you might actually want to jump on their ship to disrupt everything they're doing on there. Now, one tactic that I love to use is to actually jump on their ladder, but don't go up straight away. Wait till they fixed everything, and they're about to go, and they're confident that there's no one on their ship, all that kind of stuff, and then you attack them. Just like this. And then you can easily get a surprise on them, lower their anchor, and kill the rest of them. This is usually a good tactic to get people off guard. Now, don't anchor. I would not recommend anchoring in most situations. A lot of people use anchoring for turning. That's called an anchor turn, where you crank the wheel all the way to the right or left. You anchor and your ship will turn in a 180 direction. Now, this is not a bad idea if you get your whole crew there or if you're on sloop. But I would still not do it personally because you can most of the time harpoon turn anyway. Now, even if you're about to hit an island or some rocks, I would still not recommend anchoring. This is because if you hit the rocks, you'll have a couple of holes, but at least your ship will be mobile, especially with the galleon or the brig. Meaning you can get out of the situation faster. Now, I'm going to quickly show you guys how long it takes for the anchor to go up for all of these ships. Now, I've sped up this footage over here a little bit, so that's why the timer is going a little bit fast. But it takes around about 30 whole seconds for you to put up the anchor on the galleon. That is ridiculous. Alright, so for the brigantine, it's actually 19 seconds, so basically 20 seconds. Now, imagine trying to fight a player who just anchored you, who's shooting your ship with blunder bombs and cannonballs and chain shots and everything like that, and you're trying to put up a 20 second anchor. That is almost impossible. So basically dropping the anchor on the enemy ship is a really good idea. Now for the sloop, it's only 8 seconds, so it's a lot more forgiving than the other ships. But still, 8 seconds can basically be the difference between life and death. Alright, well that covers about some of the basic tips and tricks for Sea of Thieves. The next episode I'm going to be pulling out will be a little bit more specific. This one will be all about trickery and how to sink players' ships without even needing your own ship. Alright, so anyway, stay tuned for that. Come join the Discord and have a little bit of a chat. Maybe you guys can come up with a couple of new video ideas for this channel. And, uh, well, you know, you guys have a good one. And I'll see you on the Sea of Thieves. Bye!